This time on Pedal Box, it's all about subframes. Yep, we've got the subframe out of the donor car and we're about to put it in our chassis. Adrian's been away for a couple of days, so that's given me time to get the subframe off of the A3 donor car and get it mated up to the back of our project. One thing we were a touch worried about is how far back the rear mounts on this subframe would sit. When we looked into the engine bay of the A3, it looked like these rear mounts were way, way after the bulkhead and it looked like they'd be hanging out feet behind the front wheels. Fortunately, when we put it underneath and got the wheels on and actually had a proper look at the car, they don't stick that far back. It's only maybe six or seven inches behind the back of the wheel, which accounting for bodywork, it's not too bad. But all of our mounting points are here and here, further back than any of our chassis leg, which I thought they might have been a little bit closer, and they're really not. Um, so really, we need a better idea. Yeah, rather than building some massive spiderwork frame around the back, which would get in the way of all of our exhaust and engine and everything else, it'd be nice if we could just mount all of our stuff further forward, have all the, all the suspension mount underneath the chassis leg somewhere. So we got to thinking. Yeah, the A3 Quattro and the TT and the um, Four Motion Golfs all have trailing arms that mount about here, just in front of underneath where our chassis leg is, ish, um, and would probably fit. We did a lot of Googling to check drive shaft sizes for um, splines and various other bits, and they should work. So we went and bought one. So this is the solution. We have trailing arms, a centre subframe where a diff would normally go for the all-wheel drive, and it's a lot more convenient in a lot of ways, and in so many other ways, more of a pain. Total pain. Major problems we have is this subframe wants to be inside our differential and sump. And that doesn't work. That doesn't work. These upper arms want to be inside our sump and gearbox. And that also doesn't work. And the anti-roll bar, I think, and no, actually, the anti-roll anti bar, bar clears the, everything. The anti-roll yeah. bar is the only conveniently located plate piece on the whole thing, aside from this mount. Yep. What it does mean is that we don't have to build out a huge distance from the back of here to get down onto the mounts. The thrust of everything goes through the chassis. It's generally better. So this is roughly how we think it's going to line up. We've just got it all sitting a bit lower down than it really should be because we've got an engine in the way, which is a problem. We think what we're going to have to do is shorten our upper arms and rather than have the pivot point at the end here way in board inside our sump somewhere, put it somewhat further out so we've got like a sort of 8 to 10 inch upper arm or so. And the lower arm we can probably keep just about under the sump if, we're, if, we, if we push it some. The entire subframe that you see here, including the whole diff mount around here, is a total waste to us. Um, because we can't really move it or modify it or anything, and because we're going to be using custom suspension hookups, this can go, but for now it's kind of easy to locate everything else. We're keeping it for the time being. We've got our drive shafts here, which we're going to have to remove and replace with the front drive shafts to fit onto our diff, because obviously these are designed for a center rear diff, and what we have is an offset transverse diff up here. But apart from that, this is looking pretty useful. So the next major win that we get from using these is the suspension turret. With this other subframe off our donor car, we'd have turrets coming up here and we'd have to build a lot of sheet metal around and make sure they fit and they sort of, they work effectively. But we don't need that. So on the car this came off, there is a spring which sits under here and goes into part of the bodywork. And there's a shock absorber that mounts at the very back of the hub here and comes off roughly into my chest. And that's also where the arb mounts to and everything. Very convenient. We can put our shock here and we don't have to deal with a massive tower around the top and it makes our life for fabricating hopefully a lot simpler. We're going to have to extend the legs back a little bit further but in order to get to the gearbox mount that we're still going to keep and the arb we're going to have to do that anyway so it's not actually a terrible thing. What this means is we're still going to have to build roughly the same kind of plate arrangement so that this has got a big platform to bolt up onto and we're still going to have to attach it into the bottom of the chassis the same way but we are going to have to have a lot more metal to actually reach out as far as it's going to, as far as it protrudes. And then obviously we're going to have to add a lot more strength to it because it's hanging out further. So we're working with a nice big slab of three mil thick steel. And this is roughly the shape that we think we're going to have in here. These sections are going to get cut out. So this part here is going to go inside that chassis leg. So this point lives here. All of this off the front, just to save a bit of weight, we're going to taper it in down toward the front just to kind of clean up some of the angles a little and make it look a bit nicer, in theory. And uh, we'll see where we go from there.
So because we have a one-piece hub and trailing arm, the position of this chassis mount dictates what toe we have on the drive. We need to keep this parallel because we want the wheels on the back going straight ahead because they're not steering, because we're not insane. That means we've had to make this jig up so that we can hold this parallel to the chassis leg and we can then work out where this needs to mount relative to the chassis leg onto this plate. So this is a rough cut of our trailing arm mounting plate. It's going to live on the side of the car here. Now we've got to do a bit more tidying up, make it look a bit pretty. So we did that. That was loud. And it fits in just like this. This is the first of our new trailing arm hangers. It's welded onto the chassis fore and aft and all the way up the side structure here and what bolts onto it here is the front end of the trailing arm. So all the way at the back there we've got the hub and that's where our coilover unit's going to bolt on to actually take the weight of the car. So the only force this should be taking is the acceleration and braking force for, forward and backwards from the wheel. So we've got a lot of strength forwards here, we've got this reinforcement strip across the bottom which should help keep it flat and stable. We've got a nice big vertical reinforcement plate there just in case we get any chassis twists that this is going to have to deal with. And I think it's looking pretty good on the whole. We're all done welding up the driver side uh, bracket now, so we're going to move back the car a little. We need to extend out our chassis legs so that we can then build down our frame to take the lower suspension arms. So I've just finished extending our chassis legs here. We've had to bring them back a little bit further and clear the diff casing so they're a bit better lined up with our gearbox mount down here. What, the, what we're planning to do is drop down inwards and down, nice little 45 degree angle kind of thing, and then have a horizontal structure that runs across, secures our gearbox mount and back up the other side. What we're also going to attach to this piece is our lower suspension arm uh, linkages. So on the bottom of the hubs down here, there's a little knuckle joint that we're just going to have arms coming off of, and they're going to attach roughly symmetrically about the center of the car onto our frame that we're building here. And you'll get to see that on the next episode of Pedalbox.